Good Thursday morning, and welcome to Ice Age TV, the internal combustion engine age TV YouTube channel. Morning. Hi there. Sure. Yeah, so hey, there you go. Hey, the kids up and early with me and getting things going, and hey, welcome to the YouTube channel. Talks about all my, it's internal combustion engine age, got a little broken up there. YouTube channel for any first time watchers where we talk about all the cars and trucks and SUVs and silliness and dogs and the kid and morning, Thursday morning there for anybody's watching my channel appreciate you watching my channel if you kind of like to just hear ideas and views and thoughts and maybe driving down the road and pass some time maybe it helps you take a little nap I don't know so uh, oh my gosh what do we have today what do we have to talk about today I was at the last second I came up with this idea what do we have? And I thought, yeah, let's talk about, come on, pops, let's go. What do we have? What do I have? Around, you follow my channel, you'd be like, yeah, this guy has, what do I have? I have a lot of things. I have too many things. Yeah, I've got a lot of craziness in my life, being that I'm just a constant guy buying cars and trucks, SUVs, motorcycles, and uh, yeah, I have a lot of debt. Yeah, if anybody's really watching the channel, you'd be like, yeah, this guy here, this guy's in, up, in, indebted to his ass. Yeah, yes, I am. But I thought, you know, let's talk about what do we have. And I think that's such a broad kind of conversation. As my dog over there is moseying over here. Come on, Pop, let's go. Come on, let's go. Get in, get in the barn. Get in the barn. And what do I have besides all the craziness in my life? With all my addictions, and if you watch, watch me, you'll get that conversation all day long. Yeah, I have, I have an addiction. What's that addiction? Sometimes I want to buy something, and the addiction isn't buying shoes; it's buying freaking motorcycles and cars and trucks and everything else. I mean, it's it's uh, it's challenging as the uh, individual in my world. And some sure can relate with it. Indian hat on, kind of recognizing the Indian because I just bought the Indians. That Roguelide CBO is really a nice product, even though that, that Harley Davidson Lowrider ST is a really nice product. Yeah, what do I have? I have challenges. Yeah, my challenges, come on, pups. My challenges are what do I ride? <laughs> I even talk about that in some days when I'm riding around or just you know want to walk out the door like what am i riding around in today what am i driving today what's my challenge that's something about my motorcycles so many years ago 2012 after just living on the road since 1985 i just got to points like i am so sick of driving a car and truck i want to start riding motorcycles at that point in my life my wife finally gave me the blessing to buy a street motorcycle i've always had dirt bikes and atvs and i had a street motorcycle back when I was in high school, in 11th, 12th grade, back in 1981, 82, I had a Yamaha, 1982 Yamaha 550 Max. Yeah, that my parents let me ride to high school. Wow, isn't that something pretty cool? I have really cool parents. So yeah, so for me, what do I have? I've got a lot of things to take care of. Yes, but I have these selection of motorcycles over here. And like I just said, Back in 2012, I was just so tired of working out of my cars and trucks all the time that I wanted to have a different ride. And that's what really started the motorcycle um, addictions and collection. And, uh, and as you see right here in the shop, didn't do anything yesterday on the Harley Davidson, or I should say the Harley Davidson, the Indian Pursuit exhaust. Just so hot up here. It's just so hot. And for me, I just like, nah, after being out in the heat all day, I've been working outside all day, that stuff just wears you out. So have the fun time when you have the energy to make a good video for everybody else. And now, believe it or not, I have a video, I don't even know, that was back in 2019. I really wasn't doing my YouTube channel back at that time. So now, let's get in the office and get the day going. But it's getting a lot of comments on, wow, am I crazy for buying that Harley Rogue Guys CVO. That that uh, little short video I made of me being at the Eisenhower Chesapeake uh, Harley Davidson dealership has gotten a lot of hits. A lot of people have made a lot of comments that I'm just stupid. I got ripped off. You are insane. You're a retard. I mean, these all types of comments that are coming in. We're trading two Harley Davidson motorcycles 
for the brand new latest greatest and no you made a huge mistake and then you get this like view that say yeah that was a great idea right so they're like me come on bups all right get the get up the, the stairs here puppies and yeah is it hot up here yeah but we're coming down the home stretch on the heat up here so a week from today it'll be 70s it's a typical virginia fall weather upon us to change the season right puppies and uh that's what we have we literally go from the being so hot up here to borderline being cool and cold get my, get my voice going <clears throat> i haven't talked to anybody besides my kid here's my uh ice age tv sticker you want one i got a bunch of them if you want one i'll be more than happy to mail you one you look here and uh just go to my ice age TV comments at gmail.com. If you email me your name and address and say I want a sticker, I'll put one envelope for you if you have any interest to, to uh, share that. And all right, so let's see here. Get, the, get all the fans going. I gotta get that going. It's, just, it's humid, not crazy humid, but it's humid. So, what do we have? And you know, like I say, just the last second, trying to come up with some idea to kind of take a car theme, motorcycle theme, and turn it into the state of the times theme without getting too radical. Isn't that easy? I have no production manager, no videographer. I don't have anything. It's just me. And yeah, can, can you tell? <laughs> so you're like, yeah. <laughs> yeah, we can tell Meister Ice, man. Yeah, it's obvious. You don't have all these other professional people around you. You're just kind of doing your own thing off your own, you know, tip of the tongue, right? So, yeah, so I thought to myself, what do we have? What do we have? And I even thought to myself, well, what, what have we had? But what do we have? I mean, right now, in today's car market and motorcycle market, in so many ways, I mean, right now, what do we have? What do I have? I have the latest, greatest vehicles that you can buy. I mean, I mean, it's just... It's beyond believable for somebody like me that was a young kid growing up and just having the addictions of four-wheel drive trucks, um, ever thinking there'd be a day when I could buy a Ford Bronco, Raptor, SUV, back road, and, you know, just the package. I never would have thought that could be possible. I even have mentioned many times the Dodge Hellcat. You know, when I was growing up, if you would have told me one day you're going to be able to buy an 800 horsepower factory uh, Dodge Challenger, and I'd have been like, yeah, right, no way. I mean, so it's just incredible that the age of that I am in life and the timing that I'm here with all this technology that you know, that we that I have these really nice vehicles. And I think that it really, but what's so incredible is the conversations going to go from what I have to in some aspects to what I had because of the transition of what's going on in the ice age to the EV age. And I just think to myself, what I have right now, if you look at the, uh, I've had the Ford Raptor trucks, which I think those are some of the baddest ass uh, factory truck you can buy. I've had the opportunity to buy the Ram TRX and I just never, I mean, it's just so weird now. Why wouldn't I have a Ram TRX? And you think about it, I'm a Mopar guy, I'm a Ram guy, I'm a huge Ram guy, and yet I don't own a Ram TRX. Even for me saying it right now, that's hard for me to believe, even though I had a deal, borderline a done deal on one, but then the deal didn't go down. But now, the, yeah, talking about had versus have, the T Ram TRX is coming to an end of production of December of this year. I mean, in some aspects, why wouldn't I just factory order one? You know, I won't have to pay stupid markup on it and go with that. Eh. I was always hoping for the used market in those trucks to kind of have their day, and then I could pick up a hundred thousand dollar Ram truck for like eighty grand. That was always my goal, or even seventy grand. You know, so but that just ain't gonna play out anytime soon. So I guess you could say that. Aspect people said, Yeah, you had your chance now with it being known that it's no longer to be made. I really think that truck's gonna hold its value. I really figured I went on to cars.com 
the other morning to look at the market, and there's quite a few Ram TRX trucks out there. And on the used side, they're not doing anything crazy. So it's weird. It's kind of, you would think that with everybody knowing that the product is coming to an end, that the values would go up even more quicker. But for the most part, they're not really. So the most part, the market's about the same as it was before. But I was kind of surprised just because of be so lucky to get one. And then here last night, I, well, actually, it was like, I don't know, two in the morning, three in the morning, I woke up and I kind of did some research. And it's talking about the, uh, the Mechum auctions of the SRT, the Hellcats and Red Eyes, all the uh, SRT products going through there and they're selling every one of them. And they broke down the different numbers of what we're, they're seeing at these auctions. And so they're basically, which is pretty crazy because for me right now, I have the Dodge Challenger Hellcat Red Eye one of 34 built in that gold rush black package then i have the this is 2021 both of them are 2021 vehicles then 2021 dodge charger frostbite blue that's another red eye package and and so the, these auctions those cars are fetching you know 100 plus thousand dollars like 117 125 i mean that's kind of the realm of it and but what's weird is the Dodge Charger is getting really good money. But I've had my local dealer here and other dealers tell me the Dodge Charger is soft. I paid eighty. I think I paid like eighty like a year ago. So I think it was I think it was like a year ago, it was September or October last year. I bought that Frostbite Blue. If I remember right, I think I paid eighty six for it, maybe eighty eight. And and so here recently a few months back somebody's told me it was in the 70,000 or 80 grand I was like no way that's hard to believe <laughs> so for me like no way that car is worth $100,000 plus my gold rush I know is worth $100,000 plus so you know so what do I have versus what did I what did I have so what do I have right now yes yeah, so I think on the Mopar side I have some really cool cars and in so many ways i really don't want to let them go but they're so expensive you know for me i have huge car payments you buy a hundred thousand dollar car i mean just run the numbers if you don't if you put even if you put fifty thousand dollars down you're gonna have a thousand dollar a month car payment i mean it's gonna be 900 i mean 50 grand you know six times like 18 dollars per thousand times 18 that's 900 dollars a month so that's you putting fifty grand down, and people forget when you buy eighty, you buy a ninety thousand dollar car in the state of Florida. Um, they're supposed to five grand just in sales tax in the state of Virginia. It's gonna be more like, you know, close to four grand. So ninety goes to ninety four. That's where you get beat up in these cars. That's where you get beat up on anything you buy. It's the tax man, and unless you live in certain states, and you trade the car back in and something, and you get tax credits. But if you're just outright selling the car, if you bought a Dodge Hellcat for let's just say ninety thousand dollars. Basically, for the, at the end of the day, you're at ninety five grand in it. So even if you sell the car a year later for a hundred grand, you you really made five grand. You didn't make ten grand off the car, even though people would say, "Well, I paid ninety for it." That's always the same. Now you paid more than ninety for. It. What was actually you know the final price with the tax man? Yeah, so I think to myself, what do we have? Right now, we have the Ice Age. And that's why I started my channel and named my channel Ice Age. Because right now, we have the love and passion for all of us motorheads, the Ice Age. Who doesn't just love the smell of that gas engine? I mean, when I started up my Hellcat Charger the other day to move it around, I mean, it just, it just reminds me of being a kid again. Because that's the era I grew up in was smelling the unburnt, you know, fuels, the gas, the exhaust, the noise. I mean, that Dodge Charger down there in the garage, that thing is so badass. When you just sit in that car and listen to it rumble, I mean, it just sounds like it wants to go to the track, which it does. And it was taken to the track. I don't even know what the guy did to that car before me. He definitely did some stuff to that car. That's just a really fun car. It gets you in trouble. I drive that car, it's like, oh, my gosh. 
I'm going to jail today. This thing, this ain't good. Yeah, what I, what do I have, and what did I have? You still have your license after you drive these cars? Yeah, yeah. That uh, who hasn't seen these videos of people driving down the road? The cop videos, right? Those things. You watch those cop videos; they're pretty entertaining. But man, some of them just are bad. Just really. Oh my gosh. I just turn stuff off. It's just too much negative content. Of the whack jobs that we live around. And the majority of the time, they're all doped up. You know, they're all doped up. Either doing their alcohol or drugs or, you know, meth or, yeah, pothead. <laughs> pothead, you know, what do, what do we have today? Where are we today, right? So, so on the car aspect, my Ice Age TV, that was my whole goal was, hey, we're living in an age where more than ever, the Ice Age is going to be challenged, more than ever. And our conversation years from now will be from what we have to what we had. And it's just incredible on how what we have right now, as I was speaking from the get-go, is incredible products that have come to the marketplace, just like that brand new CVO Road Glide. That is really a nice Harley Davidson product. It kind of just cracks me up that people just in general... They just make assumptions and come to closure of what makes sense. It doesn't make sense. Not even during any research or actually even ridden the motorcycle. I mean, to me, it, it cracks me up how many negative comments I've had on my, wow, uh, I am crazy. Not, not, wow, am I crazy? One guy said, why did you post a video asking us of what you're, I was like, no. I said, wow, wow. I didn't say, am I crazy? crazy i said i am crazy i didn't ask you i told you so you know that person they didn't read the, the title correctly so the whole point is people are you know making comments of that harley davidson road glide cvo being a piece of junk and don't get me wrong does this does this do i take this to heart i don't i mean i mean i'm just sharing with you what i see in my channel do i get mad and aggravated i don't i mean it's a youtube channel it's 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 fine. I even I even respond to people. Hey, thanks for watching and commenting. That's fine. That's all right. I mean, it isn't like you and I have to hate each other because you don't like something that I don't like or I like you know whatever. I mean whatever. So the whole point is. But I think to myself, have you actually ridden that motorcycle? Have you actually ridden a Harley Davidson? I mean, I can guarantee you for the most part. I mean, sincerely, how many people have ridden the Road Glide CVO brand new model? I mean, sincerely, how many you think have done that? Yeah, I can pretty much guarantee you about every person who's responded, the most part, they haven't. It's like you have responded, they, they just bought one, they love theirs. So, what do we have? Right now, I feel like I have some of the nicest collection of motorcycles in modern times. I think that new Indian Sport Chief is really an incredible, nice package, bang for the buck. I think that new Harley Davidson Lowrider ST is an incredible, nice package motorcycle right now. Now, it's pricey. That's the Harley Davidson problem. I mean, it's an incredible thing that you're basically 13 grand more over that uh, Indian uh, Sport Chief to the Harley Davidson Lowrider ST. But the Lowrider has bigger engine, has the side bags, has the Harley name on it, has the 117 motor. You know, so it's a. There are some things there that kind of go with it's the Harley, it's the Harley infrastructure. Harley has such a bigger infrastructure, such bigger overhead, um, so it's just a different business model from the Indian, and and that's what that's what you have to say too is what did Harley have over Indian? And Harley, what does Harley have over Indian? Is they have the huge dealer network, the paraphernalia, the following, so they have just a huge infrastructure over what Indian has. And that's kind of where the separation of the Harley to Indian kind of starts is you just don't have that same type of uh, type of atmosphere on the Indian side versus the Harley. Indian just doesn't have that. And they didn't per se ever had it. So, so yeah, then I look at the Honda Goldwing. Even though the Honda product, it's just a whole different animal. It's just a whole different vehicle. It's an incredible product, incredible motorcycle, but it's it just isn't in the same ball game as what Indian and Harley bring to the table. It's just a totally different motorcycle. And 
you just don't get that exhaust note out of it. You don't get that V twin. It doesn't have a V twin. It's just a it's a, just a really incredible BMW, you know, Honda Goldwing, that whole sector are just incredibly refined over the road, back roading, highway, uh, passenger comfort. It's just a whole different animal and it's just in so many ways too refined. And that's something that for me, for so many years has been my challenge. For me, could I have the Beamers and the Mercedes Benz and the Audis? Can I have these really high line cars, the Cadillac? And, and it's just in some ways, it's like they're so refined. It takes the car aspect or truck aspect or SUV aspect out of the equation where it's just to, you don't you don't feel as connected with the vehicle. And that's the big challenge on the ice age versus the EV age. Um, vehicle is you lose that connection with the vehicle in the EVH because you don't hear that rumble of a real engine in front of you and you don't you don't the car just has a whole different presence for you when you drive down the road I mean don't get me wrong the EV vehicle it's a nice vehicle but it's just so in so many so many aspects so refined that the driver interaction in some aspects is taken away and that's and that's why i think that us ice age people just love is that true connection with the just the true beginnings in so many aspects of where the the transportation mode of the car vehicle the industry the motorcycles came from the ice didn't come from the ev age per se even though ev vehicles were around and they've been around so, so for me, so what do I have? I have that new Jeep Grand Wagoneer, which when I was a kid, I only wish my dad could afford to own one of those. And what I, so I think that vehicle there, the new Grand Wagoneer and the new Grand Cherokee, I think Jeep has done a phenomenal job. And I think right now I have some of the nicest Jeep products um, ever that Jeep has brought to the market. And then the Jeep Gladiator, I had one in 2020. I put a lift kit on it. Well, I put a leveling kit on it. And I put 37s on it. And to this day, I shouldn't have probably sold it for that race truck, Shelby truck that I bought. That I special ordered, and I had to give that up. I had to sacrifice. See, I've, I have had to give something to get something. And that's the challenge. And that's just like those Harleys down there. In the shop, what people understand is Harley Davidson Financial would not do the deal. They would not continue to carry the debt for me by trading one for one. And I tried so hard just to give up one thing. I really wanted to keep my CVO limited and let go of the Fast Johnny. But Harley Davidson wouldn't do it. <laughs> they would not do the deal because I owed less money on a CVO limited. Plus, I really liked that CVO limited bike. So I tried very hard, and that's why I came to Closure where I made a video saying that I walked away from that street glide. The street glide, I, I mean, there's no doubt in my mind. Would I be disappointed that that I never got the street seal of the street glide? I would not be disappointed. I'd be very content right now. I still have my CBL Limited and have that fast Johnny. But then at the last second, this is just the way my life plays out, a uh, phone call comes in and the CBL Road Glide comes available. Now, do I wish I do, you, do I wish I had the whiskey meat? Yeah, I do. I mean, I definitely would have been nice to pick up whiskey meat. But wow, that's even more money. You know, that's roughly. I think I'm going to say I think it's six grand upcharge, close to seven. I think it's like a sixty-four hundred dollar upcharge. So yeah, would I like to have that? And yeah, then the wheels start turning. Well, I can always just trade mine for a whiskey. And it's like that. Nah, forget it what i have it's it's all good you know the colors and then you you get bored of a color you want a different color that's just you know the, the, what i have now and then what have i had and that's the thing i talk about on my channel it's just here in the last year and a half of how many vehicles i've had even for me to sit here and talk about what vehicles i've had for what now i have even for i i'd be a, i'd have to get a piece of paper out i'd have to probably start going through my youtube channel and just literally looking at all the transactions and purchases that I've made. And that's another thing people were saying on that CVO Road Glide is whatever I 
had, I'll regret it. That I'll, that I'll regret buying that CVO rug light, and I haven't. There's not a morning I've woken up where I feel like letting go of my CVO Limited in my Fast Johnny that I made a mistake. That isn't at all. That's not doesn't happen because that new CVO rug light is such a nice package. And yes, if the CVO rug light wasn't that nice and it didn't do what I thought it was going to do for me, then yes, I would definitely be like, yeah, that was a mistake. I think anybody here watch my channel can honestly say they've sold something and bought something and down the road they're like, man, I wish I had that back. I have this now, but I wish I had that. So I'm talking about have and had, and I just think, wow, we're, we're such more than ever under the city administration of what we have is turning into what we had. And that's kind of what spurred the conversation this morning was I was thinking, wow, it's 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 beyond believable where we where we are in today's society. More than ever, you know, what have you, what have you done for me lately? I mean, who doesn't know this saying? Does it seem like more than ever that we have a younger generation? And don't get me wrong, anybody watch my channel that's uh, younger, and because it's in my generation as well. But I think more so this younger generation. Is it more about what have you done for me? Is it is that where we're going? Is that why the the Bernie Sanders is such a popular person? The the Warren lady, whatever the freaking that lady's name is, is what have you done for me? And that that is what's creating an incredible draw to the governing bodies of controlling things more than ever. That people feel like the government is going to do that, you know, the, the government will, you know, what have you done for me? And if I get the right people in power, that's what's going to happen. I mean, wow, I was seeing something last night that during the election, the amount of uh, youngsters that will be eligible to vote is going to be an increase by like 4 million uh, new voters. So apparently... You're going to add to the list another 4 million young people to be able to vote while Vivek, what's that, Ramswamy, he thinks that the 18 is too young to let these people vote because they just don't understand politics. And they'll be persuaded. And this guy on, on X yesterday was bragging about how he's convinced all of his nephews and nieces to vote Democrat. And and I, so I actually, on, Twitter, on X, I responded, said, I said, so you're proud that you have told your nieces and nephews on how to think. You're proud of that. Instead of letting them come to closure on their own of what they think makes sense. I mean, wow. I mean, sincerely, anybody here watch my channel, you're proud that you tell somebody how to do things. You're proud of that, that instead of you share information with them and you sit back and you kind of watch and what they do and how they interact and how they come to closure. It's called it's called thinking. It's called how do you process information? And that's the running joke today is you send your kid to school, not how to learn, but what's the same, but being told how to think. I mean, and that's where we are more than ever. And so, yeah, so I guess the message is this guy, he's teaching his younger kids, nephews and nieces that it's basically, could, he, could you say that he's teaching them, what have you done for me? I mean, is that more than ever the, um, the message of this, the sitting powers to be today is what have you done for me? And you watch these police videos and oh my gosh, you just look at the disrespect <laughs> The total attitude of, you know, what what, what I'm going to do and what you're not going to do to me. I mean, wow, wow. You ever watch those things? They, they are entertaining. And it does. It's an eye-opener just how bad it is in today's society of the disrespect of the, uh, the law, the lawless society. Now, here's something that you can talk about. What have you done for me? So, under the, uh, during the pandemic... This administration passed a bill, and I can't think of the name of the bill right now, but the bill was to help parents on child care. So they're talking about right now that potentially here within this year, 
you can see 70,000 daycare centers close. Now, I don't know. The, and the reason is because, unbeknownst to me, maybe you as well, the government has been paying for child care. Yes, people have been getting um, money to help pay for child care. And so the article is talking about how there's the most amount of women we've, we have in the workforce that may turn into what we had because of the change in the, uh, this bill that's coming to an end will no longer subsidize parents with kids to help pay for child care. So they're saying that it's possibly going to take a lot of women out of the workforce and put them back at home having to raise the kids because child care is just so expensive. So and then there's going to be possibly 70,000 less um, daycare centers that are no longer going to be in business because these daycare centers can't afford the, the help to take care of these kids because the parents can't afford to be charged more for taking care of the kids. Anybody has a kid knows that, boy, daycare? Yeah, for one kid, is that an easy, conservative $1,200, $1,500 a month? Very conservative. I mean, that's just one kid. I'd say it's more like close to two grand. Two kids, that's $4,000 a month. Okay, so if you're a married couple, $4,000 net income, you're going to need about six grand a month. You're going to make $72,000 a year just to send your two kids to daycare. But keep in mind, the uh, well, yeah, the, you don't get, if you're a teacher, if you're a teacher, maybe that plays out because you don't have to work. Keep in mind, teachers, what do they work? Nine months out of the year? I'm not even sure the exact time frame. So they get a break in the summer months. But wow. Wow. I mean, I hear you. That's challenging. Yeah. Extremely challenging. Yeah, if you don't have any help, take care of a kid. Yeah, what you, what you, anybody's married and had kids, what you have when you're, you're basically uh, don't have any kids versus what you had once you have kids. Yeah, who doesn't know these conversations? Because the responsibility and everything else. But that's what's bigger than ever in our society is, is the separation of the traditional husband and wife uh, marriage and we all wonder why there's so many screwed up kids in today's society it just <laughs> and then it turns into people say if you're a republican or conservative it's your fault or people will say if you're a democrat it's your fault <laughs> you just think you're looking you're, you have the attitude what has the government done for me what was what was uh the famous president you know, what was the saying? Somebody here can, I mean, I know the saying, but I don't know it exactly correct. You know, what what the government can do for you or what can you do for the government? I mean, what's the, so anybody here watching my channel be more than happy to put in the correct quotes to get my wording right. So, yeah, so what do we have? So the whole point this morning is what do we have? And as we progress, I think a lot of us are going to have you talking down the road of what we had. And for the most part, I think many could see clearly of what that means more than ever of what's going on in today's society and what's being taken away from us. And that's the message. You know, what is slowly trying to be taken away from us and so many other aspects of things. And the younger generation is such, I feel, on the page of they like this because they feel like they're being brought up in a government that is going to make them feel like what has the what has the government done for them and that's what they're being taught more than ever and that's why all these illegal immigrants are coming here is because their position is what you know what have you done for me and that's what they feel i think very strongly is that they come here and the government's going to do something for them and as you can see it's a fiasco beyond a fiasco. And I've even read, read articles of people who have come here that were misled to get here. But a lot of people understand is there's these basically human traffickers in so many aspects. If you're in a country where the, uh, you can't get out of your country and you find borderline a smuggler to get you out of the country and you've got to take your life savings to get to America, 
and you give this person the money to get you here, they can lie to you all day long about what you're going to get versus what you actually, you know, what you have versus what you had. And you all of a sudden come here to this country, realize what you were told isn't factual. But the trafficker made their money off of you. You know, that's not even talked about per se. So, uh, all right, everybody, that's it. 35 minute conversation. What do we have? And, you know, where is it going to, your, as we all progress in life, what will be your conversation 10 years from now, 20 years from now? You know, what will be the conversation of what, what you have, but what you had? And I think that it'll be, for most people here, if this freaking green agenda stuff just continues to bulldoze itself through this freaking world, which it's doing, yeah, it's going to be conversations. Yeah, we used to have gas stations. We used to have ice cars. We used to have these really cool things. We used to have more freedom. Yeah, we used to have less taxes. Yeah, we used to have control. Yeah, right. All right, everybody. Hey, thanks for watching my channel. Appreciate all the comments and uh, the support. And share the channel. And I uh, hope this just gives you another thing to hear and think about and share your ideas and views. Maybe you want a sticker, just uh, reach out on my Ice Age TV comments at gmail.com and I'll send you a sticker. And uh, yeah, so, anyways, hey. Thanks for watching. God bless. Stay safe. Stay tuned. And I got to go to work.